Dear brothers and sisters, like we have Ramadan, like we have Mecca and Medina and Bayt al Maqdis, like we have within Ramadan the best night, like we have in the year the best month. Like we have throughout the entire world, Allah has created some specified, blessed, sacred places. Similarly, this Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has been given a blessing, a weekly blessing, which is Yawmul Jum'ah. Dear brothers and sisters, as people start to return back from their holiday vacation, as people start to develop their routines, as people start to change their internal clocks after their flights and their jet lag and their travel and their thoughts of leaving their loved ones behind in their home countries. You are here now, having returned for example. It is critical and important to set a routine which is going to be pleasing to Allah. And one of those routines, which alhamdulillah, living here in a Muslim country, where you have the Friday day off, is a great day, a weekly Eid for the Muslim, a day for the Muslim to rest, but also to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala much. This day of Friday, dear brothers and sisters, while you sit here today, having bathed, having washed, having put on nice perfume, having oiled your hair or gelled your hair, having worn your best and cleanest clothes. This is a great act pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And once we renew this intention, once we understand that this isn't about just our routine mechanically doing it, no. But this is, this is an order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come to Jummah. And for those who neglect Jummah or sleep through Jummah or when they go back to their home countries or are in an environment where maybe they don't have Jummah off, that the warning to leave this Salah is very, very grave. Dear brothers and sisters, I'm going to start about what is Friday. Then I'm going to talk about what are the important things we should do in Friday. Then I'm going to talk about the importance of Salatul Jum'ah. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Inna afdal ayyamukum yawmul Jum'ah Fihi khuliqa Adam wa fihi qubid wa fihi nafakht wa fihi sa'iqa wa fa'aktharu alayha min salati fihi fa inna salatukum ma'roodatun alayhi. The best upon which the sun rises, there's a hadith which says, that the day, the best day, is the day of Friday. A day when Adam salam was created, our forefather. A day in which his soul was taken. The day in which his soul was breathed into. The day on which the horn will be blown for Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And on this day, the Prophet Muhammad wasallam said, فَأَكْثِرُوا عَلَيَّ مِنَ الصَّلَاةِ فِيهِ To say, Allahumma salli wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad in Plentiful to say salah upon the Prophet Muhammad al Darud al Ibrahimiyya upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, We are the last as a nation. We are the last with respect to time from a time scale perspective. We are the last ummah, but the first with respect to excellence. They were given the book before us, Al Yahud wa Nasara. They were given the book before us and we were given it after them, the Qur'an. This day was prescribed for them, Yawmul Jum'ah was prescribed for them, but they differed about it. So Allah the Most High guided, guided us to it. It is Yawmul Jum'ah, the Friday, the day we are in today. The other people follow us after it, the Jews tomorrow and the Christians the day after tomorrow. The hadith that I mentioned, referring to the great events that have taken place in world history, in the real world history, 
Not something you find in these encyclopedia, but the real world history, which is the tarikh, which is the history of the Qasas al-Anbiya, which is the story of the prophets. That's our world history, which begins with the creation of Adam alayhi salam, with the taking of Adam alayhi salam, for him having been breathed into by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, been taken into, uh, uh, having taking place on Friday. Yawm al-Qiyamah to take place on Friday. And the ulama have said that Friday is a day that if you remember these great events have taken place, they will be events that will make you prepare for Yawm Al-Qiyamah to take heed from the potential punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Other muhaddithin, other ulama have said, this is a great day for you to be thankful. For this is the day Adam alayhi salam descended, was sent out from paradise. And it was the day with the silsila, with the routine, with the chain, with the series of prophets then started to come down onto us on earth. This is the day of Friday, dear brothers and sisters. A great day in history that we were created to worship Allah and that we should spend this day worshipping Allah more so. As a part of a Muslim's routine and a continuous internal battle between you and shaitan, between your nafs and, want, and half of the nafs who wants to do khair and half of the nafs that persuades you to do wrong. Between you and the shahawat and the hawa is the salatul fajr. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, on Fridays would recite Surah Al-Sajdah and Surah Al-Insan. In Surah Al-Jum'ah, dear brothers and sisters, and I'm going to refer now to Surah Al-Jum'ah, a few verses from Surah Al-Jum'ah that we have in the Quran. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recites Surah Al-Sajda and Surah Al-Insan in Fajr Salah. And now I want to reconnect the importance of Jum'ah with what said, has been said in the Quran. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says in the Quran, يُسَبِّحُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ الْمَلِكِ الْقُدُّوسِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَكِيمِ Whatsoever is in the heavens, whatever is in the heavens and whatsoever is on the earth, sings, glorifies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. الْمَلِكُ الْقُدُّوسِ The king of everything. العزيز الحكيم The holy, the almighty, and the all-wise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Jum'ah, as the Mufassirin explain. Here, in the opening verse of the Quran, usually, Al-Aziz Al-Hakim, Al-Ghafoor Al-Rahim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala usually mentions only two of his characteristics, two of his names. In this, the beginning of Surah Al-Jum'ah, he is referring to Al-Malik Al-Quddus Al-Quddus Al-Aziz Al-Hakim, four of the were four of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Malik, the king. Al-Quddus, the purity, the holiness. Al-Aziz, the authority Allah has and the respect he has. And Al-Hakim, that he is the source of all wisdom. Why? More is mentioned to remind us more about remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Back in the day, when the king is about to make an announcement, he doesn't come down to the people and to make his announcement. He doesn't sit down with the people and his assembly. The kings would send a messenger with a scroll of a piece of paper which he will open up. And they will gather around and then the message will be given. This is what was done when the king would send a message. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the following verse, هُوَ الَّذِي بَعْثَ فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ يَتْرُ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ضُلَالٍ مُّبِينٍ He, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who sent among the unlettered ones, the illiterate Arabs, he sent them one messenger from amongst themselves, reciting to them his verses, purifying them from the filth, of disbelief and kufr and teaching them the book, the Quran and the Sharia and the wisdom which is the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad and verily they had been before, they had been previously in a great 
great error. Now look at the link, dear brothers and sisters. Al-Malik Al-Quddus Al-Aziz Al-Hakim. The king sends who? He sends the messenger in the following verse. Huwa alladhi ba'atha fil ummiyin. He sent a messenger. Al-Quddus, the holy, the pure. Why? What does Allah say in the following verse? Yatru alayhim ayatihi wa yuzakkihim. To purify them, to purify those Arabs, to, prefer, to purify those people who had disbelief. How? Yatru alayhim. Just to read the Qur'an, just to recite upon the Qur'an, just to ponder over the Qur'an is a process of purifying yourself, dear brothers and sisters. وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمْهُمُ الْكِتَابِ Al-Kitab, the Sharia, comes from who? Al-Aziz, which was the previous ayah. Al-Aziz, Al-Hakim, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls himself to teach them the book. And Al-Hakim, the wisdom, and we know the wisdom of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his life. These verses, dear brother and sisters, these ayat, this book of Allah changed a savage nation, an animalistic, barbaric, backward, war-hungry nation was changed by the verses of the Qur'an. How? As Allah said, هُوَ الَّذِي بَعْتَ فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ يَتْرُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابُ الْحِكْمَةِ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ضُلَالٍ مُبِينٍ This is Nabuwa. This is the history of the world. This is when Adam came and the silsila of the Prophet started and this is what they did. Taking people away from filth and dirt and unsacredness to cleanliness and purity. This Jum'ah, dear brothers and sisters, is like a weekly car wash to cleanse your heart. It is a weekly reminder of this journey that you're on. It is a reminder to tell you where you're going. You see, the people with weak Iman, they don't want to hear about death. They don't want to hear about Yawm al Qiyamah. They don't want to hear about what is halal and haram because it disturbs them because they're just stuck in the present. As if everything is only this dunya and money and eating and sleeping and wearing and just talking. Without knowing that indeed this Friday, Jum'ah is a reminder for you and a reminder for me that we are on a journey. And when someone talks about death, a Muslim doesn't go into depression. He becomes worried because he thinks, what is he prepared? But he thinks, yes, that's the next stop. Then we have Alim al-Barzakh, that's the next stop. And then we are going to be raised. And then next is the next stop. On which day? On a Friday. This is a reminder, dear brothers and sisters. What is it? What are the signs of the Ummah when they become weak? What did the Prophet Muhammad say? What did he teach us? When this ummah becomes weak, what was it? حُبُّ الدُّنْيَا وَكِرَاهِيَةُ الْمَوْتِ That you love this dunya and you hate death. Unlike the mujahideen, اللهم ثبت أقدامهم Those who fight for لا إله إلا الله Like our brothers and sisters in Gaza. Those who yearn for shahada. That's iman, that's tawakkul, that's yaqeen. Dear brothers and sisters, Yawm al-Qiyamah which will take place on a Friday. And we are given three reminders. A weekly, a daily, a weekly, and a yearly reminder of Yawm al-Hashar. Yawm al-Hashar, the, the day of gathering. When we do Allahu Akbar, and we stand there with our eyes down and we stay still, and we don't move left and we don't move right. This is like we are in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed we are. But like the assembly has taken place when Allah has summoned us five times a day to remind you. We then have Yawmul Jum'ah where you have to come. You have to come to Yawmul Jum'ah because if you don't, you are opening your heart you are opening your heart. And if you know people who miss Jum'ah, tell them this. If you miss Jum'ah, you are opening your heart potentially to be sealed, to be hardened, 
to be taken out of the rahmatullah, to be taken out of the mercy of Allah. So we have the salah, we have the jum'ah, why? Remember dear brothers and sisters, we come here because Allah ordered us to come here. We gather because Allah ordered us to be gathered. Because on the day of Qiyamah, all of mankind has to come to Allah. Whether you like it or whether you don't, whether you believed or whether you didn't, this is the day that will come. And you will have to stand in front of Allah, whether you, however you behaved on this planet. And then the third reminder, dear brothers and sisters, for those of you who have had the barakah and the blessing and the gift and the means and the opportunity to do hajj on Yawm al-Arafah, when you see people dressed, when you see people dressed like they are about to be buried in the coffin, in the two white cloths, just about to be buried, that's your attire. And you are there on Arafah. Everybody gathered on Mount Arafah as a reminder of Yawm al Hashar, Yawm al Qiyamah, Yawm al Deen, this great day that will take place. And dear brothers and sisters, the day of Friday is a day when you should do a lot of darood. A lot of darood Ibrahimiyah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Inna Allah wal malaikatu yusalluna ala al nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allah sends his graces and blessings on the Prophet Muhammad and also his angels too. O oh, you who believe, O oh, you who believe, send your graces and blessings on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you should greet him with the Islamic greeting. Assalamu alaikum. Dear brothers and sisters, also on this great day, you should have a habit which should be part of your routine, whether you do it on Thursday night, قبل الصلاة الجمعة أو بعد الصلاة الجمعة before or after صلاة الجمعة but before Maghrib on a Friday you should recite Surah Al-Kahf Surah Al-Kahf as described in the hadith by Abu Sa'id Al-Khudri who said whoever recites Surah Al-Kahf on the night of Juma will have a light that will stretch between him and Bayt Al-Atiq between him and the ancient house the Kaaba and another hadith, whoever recites Surah Al-Kaf on the day of Juma will have a light that will shine from him for, for, that will shine from him from one Friday to the next. Dear brothers and sisters, as I close this part of the khutbah and I reach the most critical point, the importance of Salat al Juma. This is a day, dear brothers and sisters, we should take seriously. This is a chance and opportunity for great forgiveness. Great reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter whatever happens in your life, no matter whatever ups and downs and difficulties take place, unless you have a udhr, unless you have an excuse, shara'an, an Islamic excuse, you must attend Juma. No matter what you are doing, Salah comes first, Salatul Juma comes first. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Taking a bath on Friday is compulsory for every Muslim male who has attained the age of maturity. And also the cleaning of his teeth with a miswak and the use of perfume if available. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu also said, Whoever takes a bath on Friday purifies himself as much as he can and then uses oil or perfumes himself with the scent of his household. Then proceeds and does not separate between two people who are sitting. Then prays as much as written for him and then remains silent, quietly. Not checking his phone, not Twitter, not Facebook. Remains silent and quietly. While the Imam delivers the khutbah, his sins between the present and the last Friday will be forgotten. Wearing your best clothes, dear brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya bani Adam, khudu zinatakum inda kulli masjidin wa kulu wa shrabu wa la tusrifu innahu la yuhibbu al-musrifeen. Our children of Adam, Adam who was made on Friday, 
taken on Friday. O oh Adam, children of Adam, take your adornment by wearing your clean clothes while praying and going around the Kaaba and eat and drink, but waste not by extravagance. Certainly he, Allah, likes not the extravagant wasters. Dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhan Allah's Messenger وسلم, has said, while a person is waiting for salah, or going to the masjid early, for example. Any person who takes a bath on Friday, like the bath of Janaba, and then goes for the prayer in the first hour early, it is as if he has sacrificed a camel in Allah's cause. And whoever goes in the second hour, it is as if he had sacrificed a cow. And whoever goes into the third hour, whoever enters or goes on the third hour, then it is as if he had sacrificed a horned ram. And if one goes in the fourth hour, then it is as if he had sacrificed a hen. And whoever goes in the fifth hour, it is as if he has offered an egg. When the Imam comes out to deliver the khutbah, dear brothers and sisters, the angels present, present themselves to listen to the khutbah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as I go, as I close this initial part of the khutbah, to give us the tawfiq to understand the importance of Salatul Jum'ah and this great day. In another hadith reported by Salman al-Farisi radiyallahu anhu reports that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said A man who perform, performs ghusl on Friday purifies himself what he can and uses dye for his hair or perfumes himself in his house goes to the masjid and does not cause separation between two people who are already seated prays what Allah has prescribed for him and then listens quietly while the Imam speaks all his sins between the Friday and the next Friday will be forgiven. And the Muhaddithin have explained, as long as he didn't commit the major sins. For those who take the Jum'ah ah ruling lightly, and it is very difficult to do that in a Muslim country, nevertheless you will find Muslims sleeping through Jum'ah, ah, Muslims turning up late, Muslims not having a shower or a ghusl. Muslims just treating it like a normal day. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, I have a strong desire to order a person to lead the salah and I would burn the homes of those who have missed the Friday prayer. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, also said, people mm -hmm. must cease neglecting Jum'ah ah, or Allah will put a seal over their hearts and they will truly be among the negligent. Sealed means what? As some muhaddithin have explained, it is that you will be cut off from all kinds of goodness. And Allah and others explain that Allah will put in your heart hardness and ungratefulness. Hence the reward is great, dear brothers and sisters. No Muslim should miss it. Unless you are traveling or you are ill, and there are excuses in Sharia. But those who should attend, should attend. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, why? Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu idha nudiya li salati min yawm al jum'ati fas'aw ila dhikri allahi wa dharu al bay'a thalikum khayrun lakum in kuntum ta'lamoon O oh, you who believe, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O oh, you who believe, when the call is proclaimed for the Friday prayer, for the day of Jum'ah, fas'aw, rush, run, move quickly, go quickly to the remembrance of Allah, and leave off selling. That is better for you only but if you knew. To rush to salah, to go quickly. And the interesting part here, look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, generally in our Islam, any good action you should try to do quickly. For sabiqu, to go quickly. A good idea comes, you want to give the money? Give it. You want to make a smile to somebody? Smile. You want to give some charity? Give it. You want to do any good action? Don't waste the chance. Shaitan will come and he will give all of the arguments for you to think about it maybe later. 
when you have a chance to do a good action, do it. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when the call to Jum'ah has been made, come to it quickly. But interestingly, interestingly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَذَرُوا الْبَيْعِ And leave off selling. Allah didn't say, وَذَرُوا tijara, Leave off doing business. Because in business, it's different to sales. Business, you have a whole, whole organization to manage, right? The headache, writing the checks, doing the time, who's done what, what's not complete. But sales is something very different. Sales is like Salatul Jum'ah is about to start and your shop is open. And your best customer walks in. And you know he's going to buy 2,000 riyals worth of goods. Wadharul bi'ah. It's difficult for the business. He's going to write, oh no, 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 I'm going to close the shop now. It's difficult. That's the test. You know, Bani Israel, when they were told, don't fish, don't catch fish on this day, on the holy day. And the fish would fly out. They would fly out of the sea. And Allah said, no, this is not the day. That's the test. Don't do it. Make your priority clear. Sacrifice for Allah. Draw a line. That's what happened. So Allah says, So give off selling. This selling, this opportunity for a part of the dunya that maybe sometimes even takes place for us in our salah. This is referring to Jum'ah, but the same analogy for our salah. Oh, I will just do one more transaction. Oh, I will just do one more thing. Oh, oh, oh. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Ashhadu la ilaha illallah. Iqam is gone. Sometimes some people are so absorbed in their work, so absorbed in their bay, in their tijara, in their work, they forget the salah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Hey, I didn't see it start. I didn't hear it start. Of course. Because your heart wasn't attuned to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted when he called the adhan. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said as I close this khutbah, dear brothers and sisters, that the Friday prayer is a right and obligation upon every Muslim in the community except four. A slave, a woman, a child below maturity, or a sick person. Juma should have a critical role in cleansing yourself, reminding yourself, reflecting, especially for those who live a busy lifestyle as it might be the only time, the only hour, the only space in their week where they dedicate to hearing the name of Allah and Rasulullah and Yawm Al-Qiyamah and Quran and Tawakkul and Taqwa and Iman. And then what happens afterwards? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِذَا قُدِعَتِ الصَّلَاةُ فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَبَتَهُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ And then when the Jummah prayer is finished, you may disperse through the land. Go! And seek what? Not money, not tijara. Allah says, "Wabtahu min fadlillah." Here, the dunya becomes the fadl; it becomes the bounty, becomes the blessing which Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gives you. And seek the bounty from Allah by working. Seek the blessings and the ni'mah which Allah has given you to have the money and the means. And remember Allah much. Wadkur Allah. And remember Allah much that you may be successful. Get the barakah. And finally, the last action we should pay attention to on Jum'ah, as I close this khutbah, is the issue of dua. And we all know the situation of the Muslim ummah. We all see what we see on the television with what is taking place in Syria, in Burma, in Africa, in Somalia, in Iraq, throughout the world, in Gaza. And the suffering that our brothers and sisters are facing. And we all see it. The least we can do, dear brothers and sisters, is to make dua for them. To remember them. To shed a tear for them. When we can do this more so, on a day like Friday, where the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam has said, Abu al-Qasim sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, 
On Friday, dear brothers and sisters, on Friday there is an hour when if a Muslim happens to pray at that time and ask Allah for something good, he will give it to him. I'll repeat this hadith. On Friday, there is an hour when if a Muslim happens to pray at that, that, at that time and seeks and asks Allah for something good, makes dua, he will give it to him. And the opinion of the ulama is that this is the time after Asr and this is usually about an hour before Salatul Maghrib. We have to, dear brothers and sisters, reflect upon the purpose of Friday. Reflect upon the purpose of the Juma Khutbah. Reflect upon why we do this routine, such that we are energized and motivated and do it with more conviction. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us time, has given us the order in the Quran to do this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends Surah Al-Jum'ah as I will end this khutbah with the following verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا رَأَوْ تِجَارَةً أَوْ لَحْوًا فَضُّوا إِلَيْهِ وَتَرَكُوكَ قَائِمًا قُلْ مَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ مِّنَ اللَّهْوِ وَمِنَ التِّجَارَةِ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الرَّازِقِينَ Allah says in the ending of Surah Al-Jum'ah, and when they see some merchandise, see this, is, this, this came when... You know, we have Khutbah al-Jum'ah in four walls, right? The time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu the Khutbah al-Jum'ah was open. Even here in the four walls, I know there are people whose minds are elsewhere, who are looking down, whose heads are nodding, because the focus isn't there, the attention isn't there. Just imagine if we were outside in the public and there goes a bus, and there goes a Ferrari, and there goes a Porsche, and there goes a truck. Everybody's mind will be looking, oh, look at that. And this is what happened with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu when he was given the khutbah, a business caravan came and some of the sahaba who didn't know at that time got up, got up and they went towards the caravan and this verse was revealed. And when they see some merchandise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and when they see some merchandise or some amusement, it's funny, you see how when we want to focus on something like a cricket match or a football game, somebody even comes in front of the screen, get out of the way! No, ow, 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 I want to see the screen just for maybe two or three seconds. There we don't seem to have an issue. But when we realign and we reflect, should I not be paying more attention in the khutbah? Then we should understand the purpose of this khutbah further. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and when they see some merchandise or some amusement, they disperse headlong to it and leave you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, standing when delivering the Jum'ah. That which Allah has, this is the verse, dear brothers and sisters, that which Allah has is better than any amusement or merchandise or business or attraction. And Allah is the best of the providers. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we begin, as we are on the brink of starting our academic routines with the children and people coming back into Doha, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq to attend the Salatul Jum'ah punctually and to, correct, and to attend in the correct manner. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq not to be sleepy but to lend an attentive ear such that our hearts can be cleansed and we can renew our faith every Friday. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept what we have tried to do in Ramadan which has just passed recently and to accept our qiyam and our siyam. Ya Rabbil Alameen.